this lady, if I can call her that, yes. was in danger of, of a knife attack. Yes. And you got in between the person who had the knife, the blade. I did, yeah. and, her, and her, you immediately went to her defence. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, she didn't see the value in that. No, it's not about taking away women's independence or <clears throat> agency not. of themselves at, at yeah. all. You know, it's, yeah. in my view, it's a signifier of, of, of good character and, yeah. and someone who's willing to, to lose everything yeah. defending your yes. your honour and your, yeah. you know, yourself. And yeah. that, that is a very nice thing i think hi guys it's good to have you with with us this afternoon you've yes, taken yeah, over yeah. Uh, the big chair it yeah. seems um, yeah yeah i'm happy to be here you know yeah. definitely so it's um obviously you wanted to have me on today and you know you've got some sort of dynamic in mind that you'd like to discuss or yeah is that... well it's always good to have a young person's perspective on things yes and um we talk a lot about lots of different things on the channel yeah but it's always better to have somebody who kind of represents your generation yeah, on things. Yeah, it's a different perspective, I suppose, isn't it? So It is, yeah. it is. So um, why not uh, talk about relationships? Yeah, if you wish, yeah. yeah. No problem, yeah. Just yeah. Uh, see where we go from there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So um, what, what would your take be on it? And how is it for young men of your generation today um, getting out there and uh, looking for relationships? Especially with COVID. Very difficult. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment because everyone's young men's instincts are so suppressed, it's it's got to go somewhere. And obviously, you can't go out and meet real people, mm. so it's it's ducted into online outlets, you know, like Tinder, things like that. Yeah. Um, and the issue with platforms like that is they're stacked against men in the sense that women have the absolute pick of the litter because they get they're bombarded so much with messages and and the like. Um, that decent guys maybe don't get a chance to actually have any sort of, any sort of meaningful relation with a woman at all, even if it's just com conversation, they just get mm. put aside. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's pretty difficult, I would yeah. say, um, in my experience. Yeah. If if it wasn't for COVID, do you think you'd be going down that route at all, or or would you be out uh, there socially I'd, and meeting women? I'd prefer to just delete them personally. I don't, would you? I don't see any benefit especially if your intention is to have a meaningful relationship yeah because it's always going to be you've met them online mm. you know and it's, it's almost a forced yes a forced thing you've yeah. gone out specifically to look for a partner on this yeah. platform and so have they it's not organic and yeah so there's no real relating going on whereas if you go out and meet someone through a shared interest and, and an actual human interaction i feel from my perspective that's a lot more meaningful you know and as an origin story essentially as well for the relationship yes um, so yeah i mean it, it feels more like it's a kind of transaction really exactly. between you and somebody it. else yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah. I could imagine that that would take the magic out of things somewhat it does and then you go down you're almost forced to go down the more casual routes because you can't you can't relate to that at all as you say it's a transaction there's no real feeling involved so it's like oh i may as well just date them for the sake of it um yeah. and you see them for a little bit they go you speak to someone else and it's it's a, a revolving door in many ways yeah yeah and, you know i'd prefer personally to have a meaningful relationship with someone and, and grow with them rather than just you know yeah. it's almost as you as you're sort of describing what goes on i mean this is it's not something that say uh, people of my generation particularly experienced because of course mm. we didn't have the internet so yeah. uh, it was very much a case of who you met yes. uh, as to who you had a relationship with but it's almost got um, for me this idea of, of almost like an like an, an arranged marriage for example yeah. in, say uh, in, in another culture yes, yeah. uh, where you almost in this sort of sort of uh, cold way uh, mm. make an assessment about what somebody might be like and whether they're going to be compatible on the grounds of, of certain yeah. qualities that they might have and yeah. uh, kind of family background that they might come from. And exactly, well, it goes back to how you were saying where it's more yeah. like a transaction. Yes. It's like, what you can offer me X and Y, I can offer X and Y, there's no emotion involved, we may as well just yeah. get together and that's yeah. what people do. Yeah. Rather than saying, you know, you're a lovely human being, and I resonate with that. I would like to grow with you and build with you and, yeah. you know, build that connection. In my view, anyway. Yes. If that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for couples, too, that um, do get together in that way, and obviously yeah. many do, 
sometimes too when they get to the stage where they decide to um to say get married and and to get things on a more formal footing e even yeah. then there's, there's there's this kind of sort of almost contractual nature to things whereby yes. um they have to agree sort of the terms of the relationship or the terms of the the impending marriage yes. and um again there's, there's just that sense of something that's, that's contrived yeah. um, and doesn't really have the kind of the spontaneity to it that, no, that it might have. No, just sleepwalk through a, yeah. a pre-imposed structure really, yes. you know, it's like you, you date for a certain amount of time, yeah. you get, you know, you do, you serve your time, yes. you, you propose, yeah. you get married, you end yeah. up hating each other and you carry on <laughs> with each other because you don't feel you have any other options and then you die. It's, it's <laughs> not really what, that doesn't yeah. sound like a fulfilling life to me, no. I'd rather. Yeah be content within myself and and know that I can live my lifespan happy as myself mm. but with but knowing that I am open to meeting someone else and sharing that path with them mm. and I think that's a more organic way of being and a healthier way of being potentially yeah um yeah, yeah. so the downside of introverted intuition is all all these ideas are, are coming in I'm trying to formulate them into language fast enough so I'm probably not express myself properly but hopefully you can see the underlying message there yeah so they're kind yeah. of competing for yeah, attention yeah. are they and yeah. <laughs> there's like, a like yeah down, synchronizing down, that with downloads from the universe <laughs> and then convert into, you then you know, have to articulate yeah, it yes yeah. yeah you kind of have to try and control the speed at which you bombarded yeah. by them oh, all. i took that yeah. cpu i think <laughs> can't handle the workload <laughs> It's um, yeah. it's a very unusual configuration, really, isn't it? It is. That's assuming that you yeah. um, you are an INTP, uh, INTJ. Jay. Sorry, yeah. you're certainly a functional INTJ, it would seem. But a, a currently, yeah, currently. it could be adaptational. It could. Because you know, I'm yeah. very isolated at the moment, and yeah. INTJs, are, you know, naturally succeed in that area. They're just one-man armies, really. But yeah, yeah, uh, I'll have to see. Yeah. Do, do, in some regards, though, is there a positive spin on that? Has that kind of served you well in in mm. in your kind of um, what would be the word uh, isolation, really, or yes. the isolation that's been generated by Definitely. COVID? Definitely, yeah. because I can com almost completely sustain myself, at least mentally. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. That build that sort of regimented discipline into my days, and that that routine mm. and that repetition carries me through, mm. really. Mm. Um, it's helped, it's helped me cope with the, the chaos of not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow, really. Yes. So I've, I've imposed my own structure rather than having right. it set by society for me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you and I clearly are very different, just like yeah. me and Dad are very different. Yeah. You're you're closer typologically to Dad yes. than I am, so you model the world in a in a similar way to him. Yes, I do. Not exactly the same, but 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 similar enough for you yeah, to sort I'll of yeah very close. Yeah. yeah. The closest person I I know who maps things how I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which can be isolating in and of itself really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. No one no one knows why you are the way you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean there have been moments, haven't there, when um you've kind of you've just kind of stood and laughed at yeah. me because my sort of way, my approach to things is yeah. so different from yours that it's almost been amusing. It's I think it would be fair to say Yeah, it, it amuses me I think in a in a curious way. Yeah. As in it's it, it interests me how how differently you process things to myself and I yes. want to try and learn something from that in my own way yeah you know and so yeah. I'm more well-rounded um yeah how, how do you think that's affected the relationships that you have had big question I know but you know um do you mean because of my settings or because the, well because that were so different oh, yeah. yeah um as people yeah. probably as characters as well as typologically different yeah. It's obviously had some kind of influence on not only how you relate to yourself, yeah. but how you relate to women as well, um, generally. I, so. I feel, on a positive note, that it's it's allowed me to have a lot more rapport with people who are very different from myself in how they, they do things day to day, so I'm a lot more accommodating of, of people's needs. Yeah. So I, I appreciate you, you will want to do something differently to me, or you'll see it differently, and instead of rejecting that because it's not how I'd process it, I step back and I think, okay, well... You know, I'm going to do my best to understand why you're doing it that way, and mm. uh, you know, accommodate that. And yes, I think that that is important for relating, and especially if yeah. you're living with someone as well who's different. Yes. Um. Because yeah. they're not they're not going to always see things how you see them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just about growth, isn't it? And 
growing as an individual and using people's differences to inform yourself in that way yes yeah. yes absolutely uh, and obviously it's an exchange yeah. you know i learn from you as well and your way yeah. of modeling the world and, and that's all yeah. incredibly valuable as well um and what about the downsides to that i mean the um i think being an intuitive thinking type you tend to think because everything makes logical sense to you that it's the right thing to do and obviously your your way of doing it may oppose how I would do it and yeah. I can't make sense of that because of my you know typological limitations yeah. so I have to you know I guess take a step back and you know take your advice sometimes and it you know it always works out I have to try and understand why it worked <laughs> out because <laughs> it didn't make logical sense yeah so yeah um yeah I think you know if, if your le level of like ego stability drops because you're under a lot of pressure and and you, you can't you don't have the energy to take that step back and understand why you're doing it that way it can be frustrating maybe um it's like no just do it just do it this way because that makes sense mm. i guess if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah yeah you, you you're free to say what you like um, you know no no holds barred here gareth go for it you know? yeah because <laughs> obviously you're very reality oriented and yes. very processed oriented uh, is that fair for me to say you... yes i think I, I think i can yeah. be i like to think that i i, I can broaden yeah. that out and model things differently because uh, as we often say on jtlb yeah. you know well, we have a suite of options yes. with respect to to typological yeah. functions anyway and uh, it's just a case of attuning yourself and uh, and, and trying different modeling different ways of doing yeah. things and processing yeah, things. absolutely yeah, yeah. um yeah I, I mean, obviously. So what? What, what irritates then, Gareth? Go on, go for it. <laughs> there must be something. I think hmm. to start off on a good note, where you excel is detail, and that's I think why I lack sometimes because yeah. I don't like faff. <laughs> so you, you actually take the time to go through paperwork and yes. minutiae shy details yes. of things that I that I would get frustrated with. Yes. And you you will insist on doing it because it needs to be done but yeah. I can't see that it does at yeah. the time and that frustrates me maybe yeah um so it's it's only afterwards yeah it I, must be immensely irritating yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you have to understand it doesn't make any sense at, at the time of yeah. you experiencing that it's only yeah, afterwards when I've got that hindsight that I see that you will do you were right to do that right. so yeah yeah it, it kind of had to be done in in that way yeah. yeah depending on the context obviously yeah but yeah yeah um yeah <laughs> something that irritates you about oh. my my style the boss because it's very unconventional <laughs> well let, where, where should we start yeah. um <laughs> well, i think like you said <laughs> it's a big one well i think on the positives to start with the positives on the positive side i think you tend to very often deal with what matters yes so for example i i might because obviously you've you know, you, you share in a house with us at the moment yeah. i might um be a, a bit neater a bit tidier than yeah. you are and yes. so I, I go in your room it's like a car crash to yeah. me um but then i can i can see the value in that because yeah um in many ways those things don't matter not not yeah. really um, and then I guess I go through the cycle, well that then appeals to my extroverted feeling because it's like, well people matter yes. more than things. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. that kind of relaxed approach yeah. has has value. Yes. Uh, it really does. Um, but there, there, there will be a desire probably on my part to, to go in there and blitz it and, and I kind of just yeah if it's that, your room that makes and tidy it sense up and that's an area that, <laughs> that i'm aware that i need to sort so that perspective from you is good really yeah otherwise there might not be a push for me to to deal with that that's yeah. you know side that's slacking in myself yeah you know i need to be more organized i need to be tidier but i think intuitives naturally think of everything on a, on a bigger scale yes they do so it's like well you know the sun's going to engulf the earth in however many billion years i don't really need to worry about a t-shirt on my floor well there's a perspective but for you the, the scale is ridiculous <laughs> and, you know but it makes sense to me at the yeah, time so yeah. it just gets left yeah but yeah i, I see how important your perspective is because everything would just descend into chaos otherwise and yeah. you know people just be living in filth i shall um, remember that yeah. next time i see it. i've got yeah. i've now got an internal image of yeah. uh, <laughs> 
I live on you, it's a strange way of mapping things. It's an but, it, uh, yeah, you know. but I, it, I find it fascinating at yeah. the same time. And, and I know sometimes too for intuitive types particularly, and, and, and Dad's similar in this way. He know, He actually knows, I don't know how he does it, but he knows where everything is. So yeah. even if there's piles yeah. of books and paper and goodness knows what else, yeah. he knows where it all is should he need to find it. Yeah. Whereas I, I would just feel like I was living in chaos. Standard organisation is simply a construct in the same way that Dad organises things chaotically, yes. but he understands where they all are. Yeah. So it's just a, si a different system of achieving the same thing. True, yes. I think maybe that's how I describe it as, a, as someone who has a similar type to him. Yeah. But it, it obviously doesn't conform with how most of society organise things, so then you might see an issue with it because it's it's yeah. different to how yes. everyone else organises things. Yeah, I, um, I guess that I express more of a conventional view, which yeah. I think is probably what you're saying, is uh, yes. it, of things that by and large probably more people are that way than not that way, yes. which makes you guys oh, interesting and unusual yeah. people, doesn't it? Really. The majority of people have to be on the same page for society to work so it yeah. makes it does make sense you know but to try and be fair to dad's play of processing things that's how i'd maybe view it in a, in a yes. positive way yes yeah. just thinking guys how about if we return to the subject of relating because it's it's such an important topic yes. and and it uh, affects every aspect of our lives as uh, as men and women yeah. and again we talk a lot about it on on jtlb but it would be nice to have a young man's perspective on that um yeah absolutely i mean despite the differences between us uh, and they are marked in a typological yeah. sense i think we get on extremely well yeah i would say i, overall. I agree I, yes. I think character essentially transcends typology yes and so ultimately it's your base character that's that's good and that's what i can can relate to rather than me relating to a 90j to an esf esfj get it right guys yes. <laughs> and you've got an f and an s and f for sure yes yeah. for sure yes yeah. yes um, yes yeah. it just becomes a very limited thing to filter people through yes otherwise i feel and that can yeah. get in the way of relating so yeah. I, i'm not going to be able to relate to you because you're you've got you know mm. certain configuration of four letters but you know, I could instead say, okay, we have we have some everyday functional differences, mm. but you're a good human being, and I can relate to that, and that's you know that's what's important really. Well, it's, it's, it's very kind of you to say. I mean, obviously, I've I've known you quite a while now. Yeah. You you're coming up to twenty seven. Yeah. This year. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, I I've seen you grow obviously into a young man, a fantastic young man, and. In your working life and, and in your home life, we, I've seen so many examples of how well you relate actually to people. And I know you've been in a in your, your previous line of work, you were in a managerial role and, yes. and you did a lot of advocacy for people and, did, and yes. sorting out all, all sorts of uh, human problems. Yeah. And, and you did that very effectively yeah. and you were, you were given that feedback at work as well. That, yes. that you know, you were kind of the go-to guy uh, so despite the fact that you, you have this INTJ profile, yeah, yeah. which would um, kind of express, I think in many ways, your masculinity, yes. nonetheless, you do have this capacity for relating, yeah, for relating well with yeah, people. Yeah. And I've seen you do it, to, just to give a, um, a family example as well, yes. with respect to your sister, Rhiannon, yeah. um, when we were out socially together, um, and she was being bullied by a group of teenagers, yes. basically. She was relatively young at the time. Yeah. Um, without thinking, you you just you just yeah. went in there and, and tackled yeah. this group of teenagers yeah. and uh, very forcibly, actually, yeah. and kind of saved the day because she was, you know, being as vulnerable as she is, yeah. she didn't know what to make of what was going no. on and probably didn't fully understand no. the, the implications of the situation no. she found herself in. Yeah. But uh, that stands out in my mind and for me it exemplifies the kind of person you are, the kind of young man that you are, yeah. that you you saw that injustice, yeah. you immediately responded yeah. and, and went to her aid and yeah. to her defence and I know that you have that capacity yes. and you, you again you like your dad in so much as 
you tend to be on the side of the underdog you tend yes, to champion I, I do. the underdog yeah. in, in your everyday life yeah. and i think that's a, a very very admirable thing admirable thing yeah. that you do yeah and i think that's at the core of your nature too that's part of your character yeah i, I would i would agree um yeah. I, I know the you know the incident that, that i'm referring to, to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah for me my value <clears> system <throat> transcended any sort of danger that i felt in that moment any personal yeah. danger yes because that's yeah. what is important to me yes um yeah and you know i'm i probably i may i may come across as quite an intense person in, in how you know regimented and structured i am day to day but I, I run a hard line on myself so i can stand up for people like Rhiannon. yes that's very important to me because if i'm if i'm weak and frail and i'm not developed i can't help anyone yes you know so yeah. that's that's why i do what i do yeah um I mean, yeah. another example, if you don't mind me mentioning yes. it, was, was in a, a previous relationship that you had. Yes. And this lady, if I can call her that, yes. was in danger of, of a knife attack. Yes. And you got in between the person who had the knife, the blade. I did, yes. And her, and her you immediately went to her defence. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, she didn't see the value in that no, as a young woman. No, it was a situation woman. that she unfortunately instigated as well. Yes. Um, so, yes. you know... And help to escalate, yeah. as I recall as well. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. But that's, um, that's very strong in you, uh, and yes. and those masculine values, which sadly so many women today don't yeah. appear to appreciate sufficiently. No. Um, I I I think there's so many young men out there who are like you. Yeah. And would and would do that kind of thing without even thinking, and yet they're not appreciated for that gesture properly no. by no. women. Well, it's, it's not about taking away women's independence or of agency not. of themselves at, at yeah. all you know it's yes. in my view it's a signifier of, of, of good character and, yeah. and someone who's willing to to lose everything yeah. defending your yes. your honor and your yeah. you know yourself and yeah. that that is a very nice thing i think personally it, it is um, and unfortunately it was wasted on this particular yes. person yeah but, but that um the you know that part of your nature is yeah. very well honed it, and yes. it, it's such a masculine thing i I, yeah. I i fail to understand really why we, well i do understand obviously but yeah. it's a rhetorical question but i fail to understand at one level why women don't find that desirable it, it's it's very sad very sad yeah. to do because I they mean, lose out so much maybe they've had masculinity incorrectly modeled for them during the development years yes and you know, if you've had a, a, a bad father figure and, you know, their animus takes on on that, they they can't relate to themselves on, on the inside. Yeah. So they can't obviously relate to men on, on the exterior. They, yeah. It doesn't compute for them. They just see it as a threat. Yes. Um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you don't mind me mentioning another example, yeah. um, again, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Sharon, don't wish to embarrass <laughs> yeah. you, but it was... Uh, another lady that you were seeing shall we say yeah. and you were you were keen for her to i think you were being again being protective yes. and, and you were suggesting that um she was in our home that she make herself at home that she sits yeah, yeah. down and makes herself comfortable and she had a defensive reaction yeah, to did. that yeah uh, and it was along the lines of don't tell me what to do what i think was the retort that came back at you yeah. and it was just a like yeah. i say it was it was an, an attempt by you to just make her feel at home and yeah. to feel comfortable and and you see this reactivity yeah. this defensiveness in a lot of young women yeah. now uh, there's no need in my view to behave like that in someone else's home for a start yes. and it's like i will tell you what to do you're in my home so you, you, there's the door you can f off yeah or you can accept my hospitality and the fact that i've invited yeah. you into my home i'm offering yeah. you food yeah you know, yes um, yeah. you know there's no need to yeah there's got to be a, a boundary otherwise you are just a doormat mm -hmm. so that's where my you know yeah where my generosity would run out yes you know it's it's you know it's yeah. being a kind virtuous man but carrying a sword so that would that be your advice to other young men in, in dealing with that kind of hostility from women yeah otherwise you you disrespect yourself and then she'll respect you even less yes why why does she want to be with a man who doesn't respect himself who doesn't yeah. carry himself in a, in a certain way yeah it's it, it's repulsive i imagine at one level yes you yeah want, you want to genetically invest in, in in a man who 
can't stand up for himself and yeah. he lets people talk to him like that. Mm. Um, do you think it's incremental with some of these women? They, 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 yes. They'll try something and well, then they... Well, it's a classic manipulator's yes. tactic, isn't it? It's yeah. in, incrementally upping the, yeah. the tolerance thresholds by testing. With the shit testing. testing yeah, really. yeah, 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 essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do absolutely, in a lot of cases, think it's in, incremental. Mm. Uh, and, and people who aren't conscious of, of themselves and, and how people use things like that to control other people, it'll it'll just go, they'll miss it completely yes. until it's it's all there. It seems like it's all there at once, but it's been building very slowly over yes. time. You yes. know, it's always been there. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're within a group of, yeah. of male peers, friends. Yeah. Um, what kind of things do you hear them saying? What feedback do you get from them as well about the kind of relationships that they're invested in? Um, Is it similar sorts of stories or...? I think similarly in, in you know that everyday ordinary sort of sense yeah. there's a lot of I think a lot of frustration uh, amongst young men at, at the state of the dating and relating scene at the moment um, but maybe it's just not as well articulated because they're not they don't have that insight into themselves yes. to be able to, to communicate it yeah. Um, but yeah I think a lot of frustration and a lot of despair in, in many cases as well would would you say that they're they're avoiding relationships? Do, does it go? Um, does it extend that far that that they're that put off by it that it, they're actually yeah. sort of? I mean, I mean anecdotally, in, in my experience, I would say so. People yeah. certainly in my friend group are geared maybe more towards casual relationships yeah. where they don't have to get invested in someone who is just going to cause them problems, but yes. they can essentially relieve their, their you know baser in sexual mm. drives mm. Um, mm. but I don't think it's because they don't want a relationship mm. there's just that they, they don't see anyone who they can relate to so what, what else can they do yeah. you know yes it's, um, uh, it's a very sad state of affairs really isn't it so you, it can, is. you can understand the, the despair and dis the despondency yeah, that absolutely. some young men might feel that's why I feel it's, it's so important to invest in yourself and be happy being on your own as you yes. and then you're ready to receive someone else into your life then yeah. and you're not going to be drawn in in by someone who's who's toxic and a manipulator who's feeding on the fact that you can't be alone with yourself yes that's that's how they they draw you in mm. would you go as far as to say that it's better to be on your own than than, than to be in something that that's toxic in that way that, that, that um, there is yes yes absolutely yeah yeah um, yeah that, that's very much how i feel mm. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm aware, we're, we're only here once. Why, why spend it with someone who's destroying you very slowly? Yeah. When you can just invest in yourself and be happy, mm. and hopefully meet the right person at some point. You know, I feel that's a a truer way of living. Mm. Mm. If you're looking to take your study of depth psychology and personal development to the next level, using Steve and Pauline's 40-year-long clinical experience as your personal guide then make sure you check out Young to Live By's flagship offering, Discover Your Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook. For anyone who has a calling deep in their very genome to become who they truly feel they should be, this guide is utterly indispensable. Pick up your copy today and make 2021 the year you truly begin to become yourself.